Hello YouTubers, this is a new session where I get to show you how you can run AI offline, run AI offline. Uh, a lot of people would be probably be asking, Hassan, why do I need to run AI offline? Can I just call the API for, you know, open AI or whatever and, you know, just send it the prompts and it will respond to me? We'll get back to this conversation. I'll show you why it's important for you to run an offline model. If you don't already know, I'll explain it to you after after I show you the the, the demo and how to kind of run it offline. Um, so for starters, I want to give you kind of a roadmap about how this uh, session is going to go, right? So for starters, uh, first and foremost, we want to basically download something called Llama like Llama binaries, right? So Llama is the the the, the meta owned uh, created by Meta kind of model, AI model, and we're going to be using that. So these are the Llama binaries, binaries, and we also want to get a model, right? So this is AI model, right? They have ex specific ex extension, which is GGUF. I like to call them GGUF because it sounds hilarious. And these binaries will run that model. So these binaries know how to interface with that particular model and run it. So I'm just going to go here and say run. So that runs that model. Okay. And then we're going to go and try it out, right? We're going to try it out ourselves. We're going to go and interface with it. So we're going to prompt, we're going to prompt the llama binaries to go interface with this AI model and kind of help us get some answers, right? And then later on, I'm going to develop here a simple C sharp.net application, C sharp app. And this C Sharp app will interface with these binaries to talk to this model. So interface with these Llama libraries. And then us again, we're going to go down here and try to interface with AI through our C Sharp application, right? The reason why we want to do this is because we want to be able to build things that are C Sharp advantageous C-sharp capabilities, things like building an API on top of it or running it on a website or running it on a mobile app or a desktop application. So many different things, right? If I want to run a simple prompt, a .NET prompt and interface with it without having people worrying about what's a GGUF, what are these Llama libraries, how do I get these binaries, something for the enterprise, like something for businesses to kind of get up and running, the people that don't have the time to kind of ramp up on all these little details. Let's start Let's start from here. Let's get these Llama binaries, right? So let's start from here. We're going to get the model, and then we're going to build the C-sharp app. That's going to be our, our kind of flow. So let's spin up a quick web application here, and I'm going to go something called the Hugging Face. The Hugging Face is basically like the the GitHub of AI, really. That's that's the best way I could describe it, right? It's where the entire AI community, a lot of them at least, not all of them, you know, look, it has one million plus models. That's wild, like a lot of models. And all these models have their own interfaces, interacting with their own interfaces, giving you the idea how to interface with something that's at least executable, like a CLI, will allow you to run C Sharp against probably 99.9 percent .9 of these models but the one i care about is something called tiny tiny llama tiny llama and this tiny llama if you go up in here uh, and i'm going to share the link in the video of course if you go to files and versions i want to download a baby one right maybe maybe not so young but um, not so small but maybe a baby one so let's let's get the let's get this one in here so this is the gguff model Right. If I go into my downloads folder in here, you, you'll be able to see it. So that's this guy, Tiny Llama, Chat, V1, Q4, whatever, whatever version people have. Okay, that's one. But what else do I need? I need the Llama CLI. The Llama CLI, you're going to find it in a GitHub repo called Llama CPP. By the way, just so you understand, some people out there try to build a .NET wrapper around this, right? But it's so damn hard to just kind of use that part because it's 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 very hard to kind of you know like the interface of it downloading the nuget package is i'm not i'm just not too smart i'm not smart enough to run that nuget package you know but what i'm going to do is that just interface so i'm going to the releases i'm going to pick up this one the one that says what so you have, have all these built in different uh, operating systems i'm going to get the windows avx one the 64-bit one let's download this guy it should be super, super small. It's like 18 megs or something like that. I probably wouldn't be able to say something like that like 15 years ago or maybe 20 years ago. But here we are today. So this is the Llama binaries. I'm going to extract these guys. 
extract, extract. There we go. And look, you're going to be overwhelmed with the amount of files that you're going to see in here. There's tons of them. Tons, tons, and tons of these files. You don't actually need all of them. You need all the DLLs probably, and then just the CLI, which is the EXE, especially if you're running in Windows. So I'm just going to order by type in here and pick up these DLLs. Copy. I'm going to take these DLLs and put them here in a, in a folder. And this folder is called AI Resources. Let's just call it AI Resources. Here we go. So I drop these folders in here super easy right and then let's also put like one more thing which is the one that the guy that I want to interface with which is the llama CLI which is sitting right there it is it's sitting right here that guy let's copy that guy see this is the simplest possible way I could find for you to interface with AI in C sharp without offline okay so a bunch of, like what nine files super easy no problem the only thing that's left for us here is to get that GGuff file and drop it right in the AI resources right here. So now you have them all. Okay. Now let's see if it actually works. So I'm going to do shift and then open in terminal. So that's my, my, uh, my, my PowerShell. And then let's see if I can prompt this guy. So it's called Llama CLI. I'm clicking tab so it auto completes for me, which is super cool. And then the model that I downloaded, it starts with tiny URLs. Okay, we got that guy. And then we have a prompt. So here's my prompt. Hello, how are you doing today? Like that. And maybe, you know, let's limit the, um, the number of tokens to maybe 10, right? And let's see how that guy works. Look, hello, how are you doing today? <laughs> I don't have capability to see. Great. That's not that's not the best demo. Let's try a different one. Maybe I maybe I can give it like a 128, 128, and I think you can do dash dash in predict something like that. Yeah, there you go. That's better. I'm doing great. How are you doing today? Right. Let's ask it some interesting questions like you know um, I don't know. Write C sharp code that reverses a string array let's try that one there you go it's writing c sharp code running locally and it's doing stuff for you of course i limited the tokens but you really unlike online services you don't have to worry about the token limit right because it's running locally it's your own machine right now it depends on how powerful your machine is but you're still running locally and it's your own machine so why does it matter Okay, so we just got AI running locally. Now I want to build a C sharp application that interfaces with it. So here's what I'm gonna do. I like the actual code is a bit too much. It's a, it's a lot of code, right? But what it's actually doing is a lot simpler than you think. You're basically starting a process and you're basically calling an exe file with a bunch of parameters. That's really all that you're doing. And the rest of it is just reading the output, right? Not the cleanest code out there. We should probably re, uh, build a standard compliant.NET library for it. But if you really want to start just playing in that direction, I want to just drag you into the, the the AI world and have you start interfacing with it because the whole the future is all AI, right? So you should probably know how to do this. This is a program and it points to the same things. See, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's about eight files. I think I even copied an extra one that I probably didn't need. And I'm just going to run this as a C-sharp application. So I'm basically interfacing with this CLI and I'm pointing to the model that I care about. I'm going to go ahead and run this guy. Check it out. Here you go. Hi, ask me anything. And then I'm going to go and say, um, uh, uh, what does an apple look like? I don't know. Whatever comes to mind. There you go. A lot of stuff. Oh, there is the skin, there's the core, the seed, the stem, just like that, right? And it's all running offline. You know, I can disconnect my internet and just run this thing and it's still going to work, right? It's just going to work just fine. Um, this interface will allow you to basically build APIs, build UI on top of it, maybe expose your own, uh, you know, API and sell it, you know, as a service. Uh, but I'll tell you why it's important to kind of run AI offline. Well, 
number one, privacy concerns, right? You're sending data over the wire. You may be training that model, you know, somewhere in some server, you know, about some data that's deep web, meaning that there are, there are things behind a, uh, a paywall or a privacy or, a, or, a, or an NDA or whatever the case may be, a license that doesn't allow you to just ship data out there to another server. And I know that AI providers could swear up and down, we're not going to do anything with your data and whatnot, sure, but it's still a legitimate concern that you have to think about when you're a software engineer trying to build something for an enterprise or a business or even for yourself. It doesn't matter what the purpose is. Number two, so number one, privacy. Number two, cost, right? Uh, AI, you know, APIs can be a little bit costly, right? I mean, some people will be like, well, it's $20, it's $30, it's $15. But what they don't understand, if you look at the larger scheme of things, if I'm living in a different country where maybe the currency is different and the dollar amount can basically pay for my meal for an entire day or an entire month for whatever, for, for, for what it's worth, it becomes a problem. The cost becomes a problem, especially if you're trying to learn and you're trying to train yourself to kind of work with AI. It comes at a heavy, heavy cost for those who can't afford uh, these particular APIs. And some people will still say, well, there's free APIs out there. You can play with it. You can sandbox it. You can do whatever. Sure, but privacy is still a legitimate concern. Number three reason for you to run uh, uh, AI offline, uh, when you don't always have the opportunity to develop enterprise or business applications with internet connection, right? Let's say you're in a very... Um, uh, isolated um, uh, location and it's an isolated server and it's a requirement that your entire application to be self-sufficient and not have to connect to the network or the internet for whatever reason this comes into play it's very important reason for you to be able to run AI offline as soon and as simple as possible without having to worry about the internet that's also another important concern but also remember, like running AI offline also comes with its own cost in terms of hardware, right? Like if you're trying to train your data, you're going to need a big machine, right? You're going to need a good AI friendly, you know, build for training that. But if you're just trying to interface, you can always train in one place and basically use the model everywhere else. That's great. But running AI offline will also allow you to kind of port, especially through C Sharp, it'll allow you to port it through so many different applications. C Sharp can run everywhere, you know, technically on Linux, on Mac, on Windows, on mobile, on, uh, you know, on, on desktop applications, on the back end, on the front end, you know. So if you want to take advantage of that C Sharp, all these C Sharp capabilities and have the power of AI in it, Running offline will allow you to do that, right? Remember, there's also a cost of network latency and limitations. Like if you're interfacing with a particular AI service, they, they will always limit you by how much you can pay and how many prompts you can do per second. They will flag you for violation if you have it running all the time. Limitations, right? You want to break out of these limitations and be able to kind of run your system, you know, or your AI system without having to worry about cost and latency and limitations and all that kind of stuff. So look, this is just a kind of a, an intro i'm trying to kind of pull pull your foot in you know and kind of have you kind of think about running this i also built a um a nice open source kind of project for you so let's see poc dot llama there you go so i think it's this guy yeah that's your guy right um did I actually run the C Sharp application? I didn't run the C Sharp application, or did I? Did I? Yeah, I did run the C Sharp application. So um, that's how that's how you're gonna interface with it. Of course, I'm gonna drop all the links you need to run this thing here, right? I will update the README for you. So when you're uh, coming to this repository, you know where to download things and run things. That should be super simple. You really just have to create a models folder, right? And basically point it to uh, the uh, the GGuf and the CLI. I hope you find this video useful and helpful. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Talk to you soon.